culture begins with the battle axe culture at the end of the Stone Age, typified by these boat-shaped axes and this kind of pottery. This leads us to the Nordic Bronze Age. The axes, most likely part of a cult to the Thunder God, remain, but now they're made of bronze instead of stone. There are also short swords like this, which are found all around Europe at that time. Jewelry consists of twisting gold and pattern with filigree, and it's similar to Celtic talks of the same time. And this is a musical instrument called a lur, which ancient Danish people used in some kind of rituals. The Tonton chariot gives us an insight into Bronze Age religion of the Nordic people. It's clearly solar. Look at the spiraling patterns, which are typical of Bronze Age artwork. Boats are also important. We can see thousands of rock carvings all around Scandinavia, depicting boats of all kinds of the Bronze Age. This is a brooch with the spiraling patterns, and here's a sword with the same circular solar patterns on it, taken from the Nordic Bronze Age. Moving into the Germanic Iron Age, we can see a clear shift away from all the solar patterns and towards all kinds of varied representations that we associate with later Germanic art. The horned man motif is here, the woman with the horn of mead, which is seen in runestones in the Viking Age, and all these animal-faced entities, perhaps shamanic in origin, or dances relating to some kind of pagan rituals. However, there are still some of these solar elements. This Gotland picture stone and this one still have these clear solar symbols as a central motif. Gold is very important. This is an eagle from Sweden. And here you can see the helmets are starting to take on a Roman influence. This one's English, of course, and the other one before it was Swedish. Here's another Swedish one. Similar to late Roman cavalry helmets, but also unique and distinctly Germanic. I think that may be a god on the nose there. Here's an Anglo-Saxon brooch from Sutton Hoo. The Anglo-Saxon art style is quite unique in Britain, but it isn't so unique when compared around Europe. Here's the horned man motif again, which we can see on all kinds of Germanic art right into the Viking Age. This is the only 3D figure from pagan Anglo-Saxon England. This is a funerary urn with solar crosses on and runes of the Anglo-Saxons. And these brooches have the typically Germanic cloisonné technique. You can see garnets and cells of gold fitted on and, and in between gold filigree decorations. This large one is from Kent. Here you can see the same technique on the pommel of a sword and filigree just underneath where the thumb rests. And the cloisonné pyramid mounts and rounded mounts. The Anglo-Saxons used this solar wheel motif as well. And here's an Anglo-Saxon runic inscription with an animal's head at the top. And these presumably magic runic inscriptions inlaid on a sword found in the River Thames. Here's a modern recreation. These are from Sweden. They're wild boars on a golden bracelet. And this is a sword pommel with filigree. Now these shield mounts come from Valsierda in Sweden, of the Vendel era. And even though they're very old, you can still see some of the exquisite detail in the metalwork. Look at the shapes. And also, this shield boss has this beautiful golden symbol on it. A Triskelion with three animals. And it's the same symbol you see here on the snake witch stone from Gotland. These are bridle fittings for a horse found from Valsierda burial and now you can really see 
the Germanic art style, taking form, very recognisable with the animals and the interweaving patterns. Could you imagine these on a warrior and his horse? Such exquisite detail. You obviously wouldn't have time to admire them if he was charging towards you with spear raised. Here's a swastika motif from the same era. And some of the same kind of animal designs. The garnet work of Croisonne on this brooch. These brooches here, all from Sweden. And they look just like the ones from England. Here you can see a similar bird motif, as well in the English ones as well, with the curly beaks. And a sword pommel, just like the Anglo-Saxon one, with cloisonné garnets. These are press blocks used to make the foils which you see on the beautiful Vendel era helmets. Here you can see two Triskelions. Were they solar symbols? There's a swastika made in the cloisonné of that brooch. Now this is an Anglo-Saxon bracteate. A bracteate was a flattened piece of hammered gold with an image of a human head on it influenced by Roman emperors. But these weren't coins, they were worn, and they weren't Roman emperor faces, they could even be gods. One of them has been identified as Odin. Sometimes they had runic inscriptions, and there seems to be some kind of religious significance to the Bracteates. Most of them are from the Vendel era, but they do go all the way into the Viking era, and they're found across Scandinavia and England. The final era of the Germanic pagan is the Viking Age, where runestones become more prominent. Here we see a Triskelion made from three drinking horns on this Danish runestone. And of course the swastika. The animal style developed over the Vendel era matures into what we typically accept as the Viking style of art, with these beautiful interwoven animal patterns. Older forms of decoration, such as this brooch, are also preserved. And in response to Christianity, people start wearing the hammer of Thor in defiance against it. Viking swords look very different. But old filigree patterns are still used for jewellery, such as this strange face. and on this beautiful Thor's hammer, Mjolnir. Are these 3D sculptures of gods? Who can say? These three figures on this runestones are thought to be Odin, Thor and Freyr because of the weapons they wield. This is a brooch. Must have been extremely impressive to anyone who saw it. As were these silver Thor's hammers. This beautiful design is for a weather vane. And these pendants may have had a religious function, particularly the face. The crowning achievement of the Viking era is the boat, the Viking longship. So of course it features on their stones as well. If you enjoyed my video, please donate to me via PayPal, the link's in the description, or become a patron via Patreon or Subscribestar. Thank you so much.